Pleasure to be on. Thank you so much for having me. Um, the game went West Ham United 3, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Uh, Spurs went 2 0 down. Um, half time it was 2 0. Um, Spurs brought it back to 2 2. Um, we created so many chances. Uh, should have scored an absolute hatful, but West Ham went on to win the game. Um, goals from the Celso for Tottenham and you dodgy. Uh, Ange Postacoglu changed the whole starting 11 at half time, so 22 players had 45 minutes today. Um, he's only been in the job for 18 days, um, so it's his chance to give everybody an opportunity uh, for him to look at them, whether he's going to keep some of these players, whether he's going to offload them. Um, but it's a fitness exercise and it is about playing entertaining football, which Spurs haven't had in such a long time where we've had defensive managers such as Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte. I went to the training session um, at the cricket ground last night. That was very, very entertaining. All it was is attacking moves, scoring goals and just looking forward. You know, defenders and midfielders were actually passing the ball forward that uh, us Spurs fans haven't seen in such a long while. Um, but it was a truly entertaining game this evening. At half-time, um, Postacoglu completely changed it, as I said. Austin started in goal. Um, Idoji, Davis, Sanchez, Royale, Lo Celso, which I never ever thought we'd see him in a Spurs shirt again. Um, Hoybier and Saar. Um, Perisic, Richarlison, Devine. Um, so, as I say, everybody got their chance and it's a, it's a real great time for Posta Coglu to look at some of these players and see whether he's going to keep them. Um, as I said, Lo Celso I don't think will be a Spurs player in the future. Um, Sanchez is a player that should probably go out the door. Um, but this transfer window coming up has to be a window um, where we're looking at defensive reinforcements. It has to be. Um, we have to bring in some quality centre-backs um, we've brought in you know, three players already in this transfer window, uh, which has improved the team and this squad, in my opinion. James Madison being one, because we haven't had that creative player since Christian Eriksen left. Um, so he will be a real great addition for us. Um, but it is about the defensive reinforcements in this transfer window. Good defenders, and I think that we've got a good chance in uh, competing uh, for a European place. Well, I'm sure you've seen uh, Pasta Coglu uh, managed before when he was managed at Celtic. Was there any uh, reflection of what he did with Celtic and how he was dealing with Spurs in this game? Well, Tommy, it's a complete rebuild and he's used to doing rebuilds. He's used to going to clubs and improving clubs. And, you know, I'll be honest, some Spurs fans were very disappointed uh, by the appointment. They wanted someone like Julian Nagelsmann or Luis Enrique uh, appointed at Spurs and when Postacoglu come in some people were disappointed a lot of people were disappointed but a lot of people have gone away they've done their research they know now that he plays entertaining football and they know that you know the only option is to pass forward you know, there's none of this backward passing or sideward passing that we've seen under previous win now managers Spurs needs to go in a different direction um, and Postacoglu has won everywhere he's been yes he hasn't won um, or, or competed in a top European league, uh, you know, one of the top five, um, but he's been successful and this is his break um, at Tottenham and I'm hoping that he's going to really take his chance, grab the opportunity um, and be successful at Tottenham because we haven't won a trophy in 15 years and, you know, as Spurs fans, we want to see entertaining football and uh, we want to see trophies in the cabinet because it's been far too long. Yeah, of course it is, yeah. Um, is this, is the Harry Kane saga affecting things, do you think, Chris? Not at all. Um, Harry Kane um, is a Tottenham Hotspur player and uh, you know, he played the first 45 minutes today. Uh, he looked extremely sharp in training yesterday, uh, smiling, uh, mingling with the fans after training yesterday. And uh, the club clearly do not want to sell Harry Kane for whatever figure. You know, they want to be ambitious um, this summer. They want to drive forward. Of course, we haven't got any European football next season, so we need the likes of Harry Kane to take us forward. Um, but we need to show ambition, show Harry Kane that we mean business and show Harry Kane that Ange Postacoglu can build a team and invest into this team for a team going forward 
So if he wins a trophy, because let's face it, Harry Kane loves Spurs. He could go anywhere around Europe. He could win a trophy anywhere he goes. But it would mean so much to him to win a trophy or be successful at Tottenham rather than another club. Uh, we, were, we were talking about it earlier, Chris, but can Spurs afford uh, to let Harry Kane become a free agent? I mean, if he doesn't accept the contract he's getting from them, he will be a free agent and then Spurs lose out on a lot of money. I mean, Levy is not going to want that, is he? Absolutely not. And I think that he probably feels confident that if he keeps Harry Kane beyond this summer, um, I believe that he would be confident enough to get Harry Kane to sign a new contract. He certainly wouldn't want Harry Kane to be leaving on a free transfer. Um, if it came in, um, if, a, if a huge, and I mean a huge offer came in, then I'm sure he would think about it. But at the moment, uh, from what I'm told, um, Harry Kane will be a Spurs player next season. Uh, the team will be built around him. Um, and as I said earlier, if we get defensive reinforcements in, um, then we could be a real force. But it's about showing ambition, going in the right direction, because, you know, let's be fair and honest about it. Since the 1st of June 2019, when we lost that Champions League final to Liverpool, Spurs have gone round in circles or even downhill. And it is about, you know, getting that ambition back, getting the fans back on side, because the fans have been very grumpy, upset, frustrated. And it's about getting them back on side. And that is why they brought Postacoglu in to entertain the fans again, because we've watched pretty drab football in the last few years. Yeah, you had some, some terrible PR as well, haven't you? I mean, the, um, the Conte situation, and, you know, it's a really, really bad PR for the football club. But your greatest stadium, by the way, one of the greatest stadiums in the world. Yeah. And, and at that level, you should be a, you know, an elite team. I don't think, in, in my honest heart of hearts, I don't think Spurs is an elite team. Uh, anymore at this moment obviously can get back to being there um, but what would you say going into the season is a realistic goal for Spurs this season the realistic goal Rodney is definitely to get back into a European spot you know Spurs not having any type of European football next year um, is terrible in my opinion um, you know even to get back into the Europa League you know the ideal scenario is Spurs to get back into the Champions League but as you said there about concerts and all of the other events at the stadium, you know, I go into that stadium week in, week out. It's an incredible arena. Now, Spurs have done everything perfectly off the pitch. And the fans now are crying out loud, you know, you know, crying for give us what you do off the pitch, on the pitch. Show real ambition on the pitch. We've got to be doing that as a football club in order to be successful. Um, someone like Harry Kane does not deserve to leave Tottenham Hotspur Football Club or retires at the club, you know, when he eventually goes, um, to not, you know, win something at Spurs. We've, we've had so many good managers, so many good players leave the football club in the last 15 years without being successful. And I really don't want Harry Kane to be another one of them. So it is about showing ambition um, and, you know, having that direction and moving in the, the right direction next season. And so far with the acquisitions that Spurs have brought in, the people are they're, they're getting rid of, the people they're going to keep, do you think they're moving in the right direction? Would you like to see, you obviously said you need some more defenders brought in. Have you players in mind that you would like to see join Spurs? Well, we, we keep being linked with uh, Edmund Tapsober of uh, Bayer um, Leverkusen and uh, Mickey van der Ven of Wolfsburg. Those are the two that Spurs are talking to at the moment. Um, it is about paying the money, um, but sometimes when you know, you're know you identifying top targets, um, if they're expensive, you've got to pay the money. You know, If you want to be getting back into European football, i.e. the Champions League, you need to go out there and buy the best. But we need to be proactive in this transfer window. I think the Spurs have done some good business so far, but we are waiting for those statement signings, centre-back signings uh, that we need in at the football club because everybody around us is doing good business. Teams above us, you know, remember Spurs finished eighth last season. You know, teams one to seven, they've done good business already and Spurs need to keep up. We need to spend money, we need to spend big and we need to identify real quality. And when you identify that quality, you need to go and grab them, not muck around, not, uh, you know, wait time, you know, for other clubs to nip in. You need to do it now. You know, you raise a good point there because I think Spurs in, the, in recent years have been diabolical in in their in their transfer policy, let alone deals that they've done or haven't done. Um, it's been diabolical, and I tell you why. You've watched Arsenal across the way, right? Get better and better and better. 
Mets have challenged Man City all last year. Had a fantastic season Arsenal did. They're in the Champions League. And they go out and buy Havertz and, and Declan Rice. And Spurs is still tr- treading water. What is going on? Yeah, but you've got to remember, Rodney, um, last season they bottled the league, having been all of those points ahead. And the previous season they bottled top four. Spurs got in there yeah. uh, above them. You know, fair enough. Yes, they have gone on. Uh, they've bought good players. Um, that is exactly where we need to be at the moment. We need to be back in top four. But we're now going through a rebuild. We're now going through a process. Uh, but it is about recruitment. Um, the recruitment must be right. You know, ever since um, Pochettino has left, the recruitment has been poor. Poor decisions have been made um, on the pitch. Um, as I said, and Spurs need to go out now and really identify top stars. Um, you know, I've said many, many times, the last signing that I really got excited about, Spurs signing, was back in 94, Jurgen Klinsmann. You know, when we went out and bought a real world-class player at his time. You know, Spurs need to go back to that and we need yeah. to go out and identify, you know, top quality players um, that these managers can move forward with. And it has been a frustrating few years. You know, when Jose Mourinho came in... That's 30 years ago. I know. That's 30 years. Yeah, yeah. It's, when, when Jose Mourinho came in, when Antonio Conte came in, I was very excited thinking, finally, we've got one of these managers, a serial winner, um, who's, you know, won everywhere they've gone. And it hasn't worked out. I think, uh, you know, Jose, during COVID, Antonio Conte, he had his illness. He had lots of people around him, close to him, sadly pass away. There were lots of issues at the club. Um, it's been a frustrating few years, but, you know, we've got this rebuild now. Uh, we need to move forward as a football club. And uh, as I say, with the signings, they've okay. got to be top quality. Just looking at it from the outside, you know, Spurs are in a situation, Chris, that not many clubs find themselves in. I mean, they have a world-class striker who performs every time he goes out on the field. I mean, should they be making a bigger deal out of that? Should they be making a bigger deal that he should stay? And, I mean, do they need to bring in a few players to support him, or can he do it on his own? Harry Kane. Absolutely, they should bring in some players to support him, and uh, the fans have been saying this for a very, very long time. You know, he's about showing the ambition. You know, players like Harry Kane, they deserve to win something. Um, you know, we get lots of Tottenham fans and, of course, opponent fans as well saying, you know, Harry Kane needs to move on to go and win something. Um, if you want to keep players like that at the football club, um, you need to go out and show ambition. You need to go in the right direction. And Harry Kane sometimes must feel that, you know, he's gone through Pochettino, Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte. You know, all of us Spurs fans thought, you know, when you go through those three managers, where on earth do you go next? It is now a clean slate. It is uh, Ange Postacoglu coming in. We first need to get our identity back in the way that we play, the playing style. The playing style under the last few managers has not been the Tottenham way. It's about entertaining football. Um, so Postacoglu, you know, first friendly this evening uh, against West Ham. And as I said, you know, I went to the um, training session yesterday. Um, we have seen some good signs. Um, add a couple of defenders in there. You know, you never know. But I think Spurs need to go go and show ambition in this window to have any chance of keeping Harry Kane beyond next summer, you know, when his contract does run out. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a fair point. You, you've got to support him. Because I, I thought Son um, was going to be the, the player that he and Harry Kane were going to take Spurs to another level. And it, it never really worked out. And to your point, Chris, I thought when they signed players like... Kuliszewski and, and Bentoncourt and Richardson and Perisic and the players kept coming in and coming in. How have they worked out, do you think? Well, last season was very frustrating. Basuma um, was a big money signing last summer. He didn't quite work out. You know, he's got another uh, big summer coming up and he's got a, a big year coming up. Bentoncourt, when he uh, got injured earlier last season, he has been a huge loss. Richarlison needs to step up. Hunmin Son was injured for most of last season. He came out and said that last month which is really disappointing to see him you know, play most of last season with an injury. Um, but when you look at all of these underperforming players last season, you know, add them to the new players uh, in this summer and hopefully another f- few players coming in, it should be a really, really good starting eleven uh, for Tottenham. Um, so it could be exciting. But these players, some of these players need to step up. And with a new manager coming in, you know, some of these players are playing for their future. He's, he's clearly assessing every single player, even the likes of Tongi on Dombele. Uh, you know, very disappointing. Spurs spent big money on him. Lo Celso, Spurs spent big money on him. Both of them spent time out on loan.
last season. Um, so all of these players need to step up and, uh, and give us the performances that we deserve. How long more are you in Australia for? How long more have Spurs there? How many more games? Only, uh, this, is, this is only game in Australia. And then uh, we go off to Thailand in a couple of days' time. We play Leicester City um, out there. Um, and then there for four days. And then on to Singapore. So it's a, it's a three-game tour. Um, we're then back at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to play Shakhtar Donetsk in a pre-season friendly. And then a couple of days later, we play Barcelona away. Uh, and, and then that following weekend is the first game uh, in our Premier League season, Brentford away. So a big couple of weeks coming up. And I'm sure Anne Postacoglu will be doing a lot of assessing. And I'm sure that he will be saying to the ball, you know, it's clear after this evening's performance that we need defenders in and sharpish. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of getting a little bit late for that, though, isn't it? It's the start of the season coming in a couple of weeks. Um, one more from me before you go, Chris, if you don't mind. Um, you know, you you look at uh, you look at Spurs. They should be an elite club. Spurs should be an elite team. They put it that way. They are an elite club, but yeah. an elite team. They're not. They're like Chelsea at the moment. Um, you're huge clubs, but but kind of limping along a little bit. Um, realistically. Not with your hearts. Realistically, where do you see Spurs next season? Realistically, we're going for a rebuild, Rodney. So I think that realistically, Spurs will be hoping for a European spot. Um, I think at the moment, with this current squad, without the defenders, I don't think we've got any chance of finishing in the top four um, because I think we'll leak so many goals. I don't uh, have a, an issue with us going forward because I think we're going to score a hatful. Um, but I think realistically, probably a Europa League spot, fifth or sixth, would be a good season. Um, but mainly, the main goal is take the domestic cup seriously. You know, put out decent starting 11s in the domestic cup. Spurs haven't won a League Cup in 15 years. We haven't won the FA Cup since Gary Mabbott lifted it at Wembley back in 1991. It has been far too long. And, and bear in mind as well, in 91, we've won it for a record eighth time. Um, but... You know, previous managers, Pochettino, Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte, they've put out weakened teams. You know, Sheffield United um, earlier this year was a truly disappointing defeat yet again in a cup competition. So it's about taking the cup competition seriously. So if we could get, you know, a fifth or sixth finish and a really good run or winning a cup, I think that would be a really successful year. Chris, we really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, please travel safely, take care of yourself, and we'll hopefully be fit to touch base with you during the season again. Thank you very much. Sorry, Robbie, thank uh, you. Chris Cowan from TalkSport. Take care of yourself. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. Okay, we talked about a few clubs.